Okay, now we move on to uh, section B of paper 2, Anderson 2014 prelim. Uh, this is with your thermodynamic, so let's give it a try. Okay, uh, you are asked why is it the first 3.5 hour the thing goes constant. So they are asking you why is this constant. So in your syllabus there can only be one possibility, a change of state. So whenever there is a change of state there will be constant temperature. And the question actually is a three, three mark question, right? So it's a two mark question. Even though it's a two mark question, uh, you have to give a short explanation why the temperature is constant. Don't just stop at, oh, because it's changing state. Okay, unless it is a one mark question. Okay, so uh, be specific. Uh, look at the content of the context to see what is the state of the coolant. Is it liquid? Is it solid or what? So if you look through this, so if you look through this, you can see that in here, the coolant is actually in a solid state, state at the beginning. So meaning that this state change is from solid to liquid. So with that understanding, let's begin explaining. So here, uh, explain that the coolant is undergoing a change of state. Now, uh, don't be like me, uh, be specific. So down here, change from what to what. So in this case, it's changed from solid to liquid. So it effectively, it is melting. Lah. Okay, so just mention the word melting. So then the second part of the answer, give a short explanation why during melting, the temperature is constant. So just say something like, the energy absorbed by the coolant is used to overcome the intermolecular force only. So as such, temperature is constant. That's it. Part two, uh, calculation is quite simple. Uh, you need to have the understanding that the heat loss by the food must be equal to the heat gained by the coolant. And the heat gained by the coolant actually uh, comes in twofold. Number one is that uh, the energy is used to overcome the intermolecular force, right? Because it's melting. And number two, uh, after the coolant melts, it actually increases its own temperature to room temperature. So you have two parts. Uh, mass time latent heat of fusion and mass times the spe specific heat capacity and the change in temperature. So this change in temperature, please be careful. The change is from 8 degree, uh, is from minus 5 to 8 degree. So effectively, the change is 13 degrees C. So once you plug in all the value, press the calculator, you get this value. And like I said, be very careful with the significant figure. Uh, down here, you have 5SF and uh, ridiculous. So please reduce it to either 2SF or 3SF, okay? And you'll be fine. Okay, for your part B, uh, actually for your part B, uh, it is quite strange lah. How can uh, something drop so much uh, within zero time? So anyway, uh, the instance where the ice cube is dropping, so from A to B is actually, you can see a very graduate drop. So even though it is quite uh, squishy here, if you look at the time scale, it's actually uh, about, uh, 15 minutes. So 15 minutes drop uh, of uh, 30 degree I think is feasible. So this sharp drop here indicates that the ice cube has been just dropped into the into the T. Okay and uh, at part C here is actually when the uh, ice cube has all melted. Uh, then you may ask me, teacher how come the ice melt like immediately when it drop into the tea? Uh, and uh, it's just 40 degree the tea. How come it drop suddenly? Uh, let's choose the best option out of the four. Because you know that B is just when the ice drop in and you are only left with C and D, right? So if you look at D, D is actually already the room temperature. So it cannot be D. So. The only option available now is C. So take it as C. Okay, just imagine the the ice cube may be very, 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 very tiny. So that's why once you drop into the hot tea, it immediately melts. Okay. Uh, B part two. Uh, explain uh, the temperature change from C to D. So uh, since you already say that the ice has melted at C. Okay, the change from C to D is actually because uh, C 
is below the surrounding temperature okay uh, so therefore because heat always travel from a region of high temperature to low temperature and since the T is now at a lower temperature than the surrounding the T is going to absorb heat energy from the surrounding and uh, until the temperature of the T reaches the surrounding temperature okay uh, and of course the last question what is the surrounding temperature B whereby it is constant okay okay question 10 question 10 a is your typical explanation this one refer to the book uh, they have detailed explanation on how the alternating voltage is produced uh, the keyword here is that you have to address why is it alternating so you have to make reference with Lenz's law uh, because it's just too much so I don't think you need to use Faraday's law to explain why is there a induced voltage here so just pay attention to the alternating work uh, and you should be fine okay uh, P part I so uh, when you are using directly proportional uh, there are two criteria to, to meet Number one, it has to be a linear line, meaning that the gradient is uniform. Number two is that it must begin with the origin. It has to start with zero, zero. Then it qualifies for directly proportional. So down here, uh, just for completion's sake, it is directly proportional and the gradient is positive. So just add a few words. Lah. Okay, uh, part two, I'm not going into it. Part 3, I'm not going into it. Uh, how you get all these number? Okay, go and look at your graph. Okay, find the gradient. Or if not, extend the line and then predict it. Okay, or just read directly. Uh, why the efficiency is not 100% in the textbook? There are a lot of answers. Please refer to it. Okay, part C. Uh, why is it? used in power transmission again this one is from your textbook okay what you can imagine is that your power supply from the uh, power station let's say it's an AC supply is going in a cable the cable will have some resistance okay let's imagine it just form a loop like that this is your cable resistance so the cable resistance will have certain R. Okay, if we want to calculate the power dissipation here, uh, you see, because this uh, power grid is connected to some household, and you do not know how much resistance uh, each household has. So therefore, you would not know what is the voltage that is here. Even though, okay, this is 240 volt, because this thing is in series, right? You won't know how much voltage here and how much voltage here because voltage is being shared. So when you are calculating power dissipation in the cable, it is best to use current. So uh, if you use current, the power dissipation for this part, the cable resistance is I squared R. So what happens is that if you are having a large voltage because V is equals to IR you know that if your R is big then your I has to be small because okay this one may not be obvious we arrange this V over I so if your R is huge your I must be small because your total resistance of this entire circuit this R is the R of the entire power grid okay so if your voltage is high that means your current will be less and if your current is less when you put this current into your power dissipation formula then your power dissipation will be less that's why when your voltage is being stepped up okay your current flowing through the cable will be less 
and because power dissipation is by p equals to i square r so your power dissipated by the current will be less that's how this thing works okay if you are still not sure uh, please come to me okay let's continue okay this is just a uh, oven quite simple uh, open and close switch uh, if you are not sure trace the current and you should be able to deduce it okay uh, part two part two i think most of you can explain it uh, just that the word you use must be very careful uh, highlight that the switch is actually s1 controlling the fan is actually positioned just next to the main supply so if s1 is open the entire circuit will be open even if s2 is closed so you need to make reference with s2 and how the circuit behave okay you need to make this comparison then uh, the whole point will be highlighted okay uh, part three part three just mentioned that the fan is responsible to give a cooling effect to the heater to prevent it from overheating and ignite and uh, that should be all because it's just one mark okay p part one uh, b part one if you look at the circuit it is a parallel circuit meaning that both the heater and the fan is going to get 230 volt so if you look at this diagram uh, imagine everything is closed okay so parallel 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 so 230 volt 230 volt in the passage you are already given the power rating so with this uh, you can find the current flowing through uh, in the heater and in the uh, fan so once you know that uh, just sum up the uh, current okay because it's in parallel so you need to sum up the current you get this and to choose a fuse rating choose one that is just above it 17a should be fine okay uh, how the earth wire uh, and the fuse is going to protect the user so basically the earth wire give, uh, will channel the current to the ground if the casing becomes live and that is because because you are asked to explain so you have to explain it so this is because the earth wire give the least resistive path for the current to flow from the casing and then please remember to make reference to the user so down here remember so it prevents the user protects sorry not prevent protects the user from getting a shock okay you have to make this reference because the question context is how does it make the oven safer to use so that's why you need to make reference to the impact on the user okay next uh, the fuse how does it work the fuse will blow and open the circuit when a large surge of current flows through it so how does it impact the user okay so therefore it protects the circuit from overheating okay and uh, that's it okay this is the impact to the user it prevents overheating hmm? okay and cause of fire and oh last question okay last question uh, you have to read the question very carefully here because from this sentence you can deduce the period of the wave and which you can use f equals to 1 over t to find the frequency and then you have to make use of this information here to find out the wavelength okay so distance between each wave is your wavelength so use your v equals to f lambda you can then find the speed okay then for your part two uh, be specific uh, the wavelength okay let's explain it from the start you need to know first that the depth of the lake will affect the speed of the wave and the frequency is going to be constant because the frequency is going to be determined by the disturbance here it's not going to be affected by the depth of the lake so frequency is constant so by v equals to f lambda because v is going to slow down as uh, the lake is becoming more and more shallow so v is decreasing f is constant so therefore 
lambda here, the wavelength must decrease. So because lambda is decreasing, so you can see that the, the wave appear closer and closer as it approaches the shore. Okay, so you have to be specific. So my answer here is not specific enough. I didn't mention that the shallower it gets, the slower it gets. Okay, because I have to make reference to this statement. Why the wave appear closer? So the wave appear closer because lambda decreases. And lambda decreases because velocity decreases. And why velocity decreases? Because the lake is becoming shallower. Okay? Uh, okay, part 3. Part 3, you have to mention that it is difficult to see because the amplitude of the wave decreases. So you see, you have to relate what you observe with a parameter. So in this case, it's the amplitude. Then next, the question asks you to explain. So you have to explain why the amplitude is decreasing. And that is because energy is being lost to the surrounding. And uh, you can give a few examples. So for completion's sake, you can mention that, oh, it is lost due to turbulence. It is lost due to friction with the lake's uh, lake bed. Okay? Uh, B. So why do you use electromagnetic wave? Because it travels at the speed of light. So transmission is very rapid. Okay, and number two is because it can travel through vacuum. Okay, that's why you don't use uh, longitudinal wave. Uh, part two, uh, satellite TV has to use microwave because you need high frequency. Advantage. Advantage could be low signal loss, larger coverage, etc. etc. Yeah, you have quite a lot in the book. Okay, part four, right? Part four, remember that the signal actually goes all the way up to the satellite and the satellite actually re-emit back into the television. So actually you have two times the distance. So you need to divide by two. Okay? So that's why you get, uh, you multiply this entire chunk and then you divide by two from the 2D here and you get the answer. End of paper. That's it. So you can see this paper calculation wise is quite straightforward. Uh, explanation wise uh, need to be very precise, accurate and always relate back to the question and you should be fine.